Hello everybody, I'm Drizzt Duarden and welcome to the first episode of Drizzt's Den. Okay, so this is a show where I am going to touch on hot topics of the video game industry. News, reviews, new games coming out, everything. So, we've seen a new title at E3. Well, a new title in the series, I should say. This is a, a hot topic in the video game industry itself. A lot of people love it, a lot of people hate it. This is Microsoft's best-selling title. The game I'm talking about is Call of Duty. See them all? Call of Duty. Alright, uh, before I go any further, I'd like to apologize about the quality of the video. I'm on my webcam, my high definition video camera. It won't shoot past, uh, I don't know, five minutes for some reason. This video is going to be a little bit longer than five minutes, but I'm going to try to go as fast as I can. I don't want to keep you all day. Oh. Rocking my new Cincinnati Reds hat and my new uh, Punisher tongue piercing. It's upside down, but oh well, you get the point. So let's just go and talk about Call of Duty 4. This is arguably the best Call of Duty in the entire series. Okay, it's my favorite by far. Um, absolutely love this game. I amassed uh, 15 days on the multiplayer with 250,000 kills. That's a shit ton. My kill death ratio is about 1.75 or so. Now, uh, this is my first video I'm going to be editing with Sony Vegas. So you're going to be seeing a lot of cool, different stuff, you know. So, let's talk about this and why it was so good balanced if you're gonna make a great FPS you got to have balance in every aspect of the game the campaign was amazing the graphics were top-notch for their day what can I say I mean it was an amazing game the weapons were balanced in the online multiplayer the maps were great the spawn system was it messed up a couple times but I mean overall it was pretty good the community of the game, the age demographic was 18 to 25, in my opinion, I think that's who played it, the 18 to 25 year olds. And uh, they were mutual, they had mutual respect for one another. I mean, it wasn't like the Halo 2 days when after every game somebody would say, hey man, good game, you guys played good. Even Win, lose, or draw, you still had respect for one another. If, you, if anybody out there remembers the good old Halo 2 days of Xbox Live, comments post them in the comments I want to know your experience with it but this one I mean it had the trash talk element it definitely did but it wasn't like the trash talk today you still had respect for one another and I like that I like the fact that people have respect for each other unlike today okay so that's Halo 4 this is gonna be our base score this is what we're gonna base all the other Call of Duties off of okay it's going to be a 10 out of 10. That's not what I would give it personally. I would give it about an 8.5 out of 10. But it's what we're basing the other Call of Duties off of. Got it, guys? Alright, uh, the next one in the franchise. Right here. War at War. You see it? Neither do I. You know why? Because it is like 30 miles away at a store it might possibly be in a dumpster by now I had it for like I had it long enough I prestiged one time and I I went and sold it because I absolutely hated that game I hated everything about that game it was terrible so why did I hate that game unbalanced the weapon system sucked, the ranking system sucked, the maps sucked, the campaign was eh, you know, it was it was okay. 
The only thing that World of War had going for it really was Nazi zombies. And it was it was really fun. I really enjoy Nazi zombies. Getting in there with like three of your good friends and just lighting zombies up, you know. It was really cool back in the day. Uh, World of War, the graphics were really good. I was really impressed with the graphics, but, you know, I mean, going from a modern warfare kind of deal, and then Treyarch just takes it back to World War II, it, it just, it didn't seem right, you know? I mean, uh, Infinity Ward had so much success from modern shooter, and then World of War was, again, the um, World War II shooter, uh, like I said, it just, it didn't feel right. The weapons were so overpowered, it was crazy, the perks you had, and then some of the weapons, now, let me rephrase that, some of the weapons were so overpowered, it was crazy, and some of the weapons were so underpowered, it should have been some kind of pellet rifle or something. Really, Treyarch? Alright, let's go to the next one in the series, which would be... Alright, uh, oh, uh, Treyarch, for World of War, I would give it a 5. Yeah, a 5. Okay, so, Modern Warfare 2. I got the limited edition 10 case kind of deal with all that good shit, which was just a waste of money. Okay, so, the first couple months of this game, I, I really loved it. It was a great game. I, I thoroughly enjoyed it. I prestiged three times uh, the first couple, I mean, like the first six months. It was awesome. I loved it. And so did my friends. My friends loved it too. Uh, until after that first era. Then the people that were, that got a hold of it were, um, Cheaters? Yeah? Can you say cheaters? Yes, you can. They started exploiting the game's flaws. You had glitches, you had uh, modding, you had modding, so much modding. Tenth Prestige Lobby, only 1600 Microsoft points. No. No, 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 no. I absolutely hate it. Why don't you just do it yourself and quit? Cheating, quit boosting, quit doing all this dumb shit. It pissed me off so much. Okay, so, I mean, I proceeded a total of five times in this game. And after the third prestige, I just. I couldn't really play it anymore because of all the bullshit that was going on in this game. It was just full. A bullshit. And you, you guys know it as well as I do. Don't try to cover, don't try to, you know, uh, make up excuses for this game. That's mainly the game's fault. If it didn't have so many flaws and errors, then it wouldn't have been uh, hacked, it wouldn't have been modded, it wouldn't have so many glitches that you can use. Care package glitch, javelin glitch, uh, a whole bunch of others. Uh, there's just two off the top of my head. And plus the nuke boosting. Everything. I got two nukes on this game, legit. And everybody else who got them, or almost everybody else who got them were boosting and free for all. So, uh, oh, and the community of this game. Community, like I said, on this game, about 18 to 25. This game, about 13 to 17. You have to excuse me. Allergies, you know, are horrible. Anyways, 13 to 17. When you have 13 year olds using words that they don't even know the meaning of yet, cussing out people that are older than them it, it just makes me sick to my stomach it really does 
you know, I'm not telling you how to raise your kids, because nine times out of ten, the parents get Xbox Live for their kids, and they don't know that the kids are going to be learning words, learning a lot of stuff that they shouldn't know at that age. You know what I'm saying? I mean, when you hear a 13-year-old or younger use words like use fuck, shit, damn, cunt, bitch, whore, slut, uh, cocksucker, motherfucker. It's just, uh, it's horrible. It really is. When I was 13, the bad, the baddest word I would dare to say was crap. And now, like, little three-year-olds say crap all the time. I don't know what's going on with everything, but I know it, it makes me sick to my stomach. So, if you're a parent watching this, your kids are pretty much cussing up a storm when you're not looking. On Xbox Live, playing these types of games. It is an M-rated title. Just putting that out there. I'm not trying to, like, say, don't buy your kids games because they're M-rated. No, I'm... Yeah, I had M-rated games when I was young, too. But, the thing about it is, I didn't really have Xbox Live to explain to me what all of these things are and teach me new shit. I didn't get Xbox Live till I was in high school, so... Alright. Let's go to the next game. Call of Duty Black Ops. Trey Archer's chance to redeem themselves. And did they? Yeah, they did. They really did. This was a good game. This was one of the good games in the series. One of the great games in the series. I mean, I really liked this game. The online was fluid. It was balanced. The maps were... Uh, there was a couple maps I loved. There was a couple maps I hated. And a couple maps I was just eh. But, the thing that made everything, every little bit of difference is the weapons were balanced. Sure, you had a couple weapons like my favorite thing to use AK-47 with rapid fire yeah I'm guilty of using that but it just it lit people up but I also died a lot with it too so you was able to kill people with overpowered weapons I'm not saying the AK-47 or AK-74 was overpowered or anything like that it wasn't until you put rapid fire on it um, I said, I mean, some weapons were overpowered, but you had everything kind of just balanced itself out in the end. The kill streaks, you know, they ramped it up and added more, or you know, they did the same thing as this. They added like a shit ton of kill streaks. That's good and all, but a lot of people, I mean, a lot of the kill streaks are way OP. I know you're probably saying, Drizzit, shut up about overpowered, blah, blah, blah. Well, I, I really can't. Because if you have something that's overpowered, a lot of people are just going to use it over and over and exploit it for what it really is. Model 1887. Perfect example. No lie. <laughs> this is no lie. Uh, we was playing a custom game. We all had the models. My friend got a Harrier. Brought it in. If you look up at the Harrier with the old models, jump up in the air and shoot, you could hit the Harrier. The range and power of the Model 1887s when this game first came out was so overpowered, it was fucking ridiculous. If you put a sniper scope on it, you could have used that shotgun as a sniper. This game not a lot of overpowered weapons like it was in that game no it was all kinda even okay and this game was all even yeah I just held it upside down what are you gonna do about it there's a couple overpowered issues in here that maybe they fixed with some patches or maybe they've done a little something 
but I haven't played it since forever. Halo Reach is the only game I'm playing right now. Now we go to the big elephant in the room. The one that sticks out. The one either you fucking love or you fucking hate. Modern Warfare 3. MW3. COD MW3 COD 17,000 million. Okay. What what do I start out by saying about this game? It it sucks. It blows. I hate this game. I like the campaign. I like the Spec Ops missions. But I'm a multiplayer kind of guy. You don't buy Call of Duty for the 20 hour campaign. You buy it for the 800 year multiplayer experience. And they totally screwed everything up with this one. Overpowered weapons, perks that are just retarded, uh, equipment that's retarded, stuff that shouldn't even exist. It's, oh, oh my god, it just pisses me off. The age demographic is like 1 to 12, with kids yelling in your ear constantly about fuck this, fuck that, shit, you fucking suck, all that stuff. It's basically a re a reskin version of this, but ten times worse. I haven't seen any like glitches or flaws. I have seen a couple people get outside of the map, a couple people get in areas they shouldn't have, but a lot of people do that with every game. There was some going on of that in this game, but not a lot of it. And there's not a lot of it going on in this game. So. I like the fact that Infinity War took extra time to ensure that there wasn't going to be any glitches, ex glitches um, used in abundancy. I couldn't think of the word there. I was trying to get out, but oh well, it's all good. You know what I'm saying? I just hate it. Every time I get into a multiplayer match, it just automatically pisses me off. I don't know. I usually am a pretty calm guy. But this is so hardcore competitive. It is crazy. Why do you get so worked up over a video game? I prestiged three times on this game. Prestiged five times on this game. Four times on this game. Ten times on this game. You know why I prestiged ten times on this game? Because it was casual play. It was more casual than any of the rest. The, plus, it was pretty easy to rank up too, and that's what I fucking hate about these games. Oh, level 80. Why go so high? I understand you want to keep people playing your game, when you're, but when you're coming out with a title next year, another Call of Duty, year after year after year, you don't have to make the multiplayer so immersive and so huge. Go back to your roots, Call of Duty. That's this game just sucks it don't lie to me every time you get on this game you're just automatically pissed off ain't you get in a multiplayer game you play some team deathmatch and something happens and before you know it you're yelling profanity at the screen you're cussing out your teammates when you should be supporting them I don't play this game anymore I don't. I should actually take it over to GameStop and get fu fucking three dollars out of it because that's all I'll get from them fucking cheap ass sons of bitches. Absolutely hate it. That's why I'm playing Halo right now. Because this Call of Duty sucks. This Call of Duty ain't much better. This one's okay, but I just can't make my... It doesn't have replay value to me. This one's amazing but you can't get into a non modded lobby because it's old and tra or infinity war don't give a shit okay 
Modern Warfare 3. My opinion, gets a 5 out of 5. Black Ops 1. It gets a 7 out of 10. I mean, 5 out of 5. 5 out of 10. Black Ops 2. No, I'm going to give it a 7.5 7 out of 10. Just because it was fun. It had zombies. Multiplayer was fun too. Uh, World at War got a 5. Modern Warfare 2 got a 6.75. Alright. So, my thoughts on what I've seen at E3. I'll, I would just point it this way. I had Black Ops 2 pre-ordered for uh, Xbox. I had it pre-ordered at GameStop. After E3, I drove back to GameStop, walked in, canceled my pre-order, and put my money on Halo Reach Limited Edition. What I've seen at E3 is a turd. I'll just go out and say it. It just... You know, I don't... I just don't get the 2025 thing. I don't, I don't get what they're trying to do with everything and go so help me God those weapons are gonna be so outrageous if you want to talk about overpowered I'll talk about that freaking snipe rifle with the scope that can see through walls and charge up the rounds and shoot through 800 feet of fucking cinder blocks could you imagine the online play no could you imagine okay you're sneaking up on three of the guys, three of the enemies, okay? Sneaking up behind them on a flanking maneuver while your teammates draw their fire and their attention. It's a tactic we use all the time. Sneaking up on them. Getting to cover behind a building or something. You're getting ready to take them out and bam, you're dead. And then from like three miles away, because that's how big the map's going to be. Three miles away sits a sniper with a overpowered sniper scope and overpowered weapon. And he's able to charge up the rounds. Do you imagine the kill streak? You're going to be able to call in fucking aliens from outer space to come in and butt rape your opponents. Futuristic warfare? Are you serious? Call of Duty they used to do modern warfare right but they don't even do modern warfare right anymore now they're going to futuristic they're going to fuck that up for everybody else too plus futuristic warfare look at this you got halo you're competing against on futuristic warfare you got ghost recon you're competing against on ghost or futuristic warfare and both of these titles are amazing ghost recon did it right halo has always done futuristic warfare right Call of Duty, especially Treyarch. Treyarch hasn't even done a modern shooter. Vietnam was the most modern thing they've done. So they're just skipping modern, going straight to future, and their wacky ideas are going to just run rampant. And you know what the crazy thing is? It's going to sell like fucking hotcakes because the 12 to 13 year olds think that they have to have every Call of Duty that comes out to the Xbox, to the PS3, and they're ruining it for everybody else. Well, no, sorry, I didn't mean they as in uh, the 12, 13 year olds, I meant they as in the game companies. They're ruining it for everybody. Because they're releasing shit games. Selling them to the demographic that is not supposed to, not who they're supposed to be selling to. They're just coming up with like new shit, reskinning the old engine, making a new game, and sending it out year after year after year. And it's staggered. So this year, Call of Duty Black Ops 2 will come out. It's about Treyarch. Next year, Modern Warfare 4 will come out. Year after that, Black Ops 3 will come out. Year after that, Modern Warfare Call of Duty 5 will come out so on so on so on 
and they're running the series into the ground with that shit. They're not letting people settle into their new game. They're not letting people experience the 800 year multiplayer experience. They're running it into the ground and I hate to say this because I love the series but if they do not do something huge, if they don't do something that that matches the greatness of this game that matches how successful it is matches how amazing and how balanced it was how uh, everything I mentioned on this game if they don't do something that mimics that the franchise is dead and what I've seen at E3 what I've played recently with Modern Warfare 3 I'm not buying another Call of Duty unless it is that revolutionary game like this. I'm pretty adamant about my thoughts on the Call of Duty franchise because it used to be one of my favorites. Now it's one of my least favorites. So, I mean, and think about this, okay? Robert Bowling's not going to be with the company anymore. I mean, he's not with the company. Is that going to be a bad thing for Infinity Ward, or is it going to be a good thing? Next year, we will find out, because they will be coming out with a new Infinity Ward game next year. So, we'll find out. I don't know. Like I said, if they don't do something big to change games forever, they're dead. They're already dead to me. I don't know about you guys. Why don't you leave a comment? Okay, so that's the end of Modern Warfare. Let's stop talking about it. Let's cool down. I'm going to run this video up to 30 minutes. So, um, comments. Leave any comment you want. Just please don't troll. Okay? Leave an intellectual comment so I can provide an intellectual answer. Being intelligent isn't that hard. Use proper, you know, words. Don't be like, you fucking suck, lols, uh, BBQ, WTF, for the win, gangster. I don't know. I don't talk like that. I'm well educated. Unlike some people, I guess. Oop. Sorry, my computer is sliding off. Okay, so uh, update on the channel. I uh, haven't really been able to post anything because my gaming computer is it's down for the count. So sorry, but I will be able to post console gameplay. That's right. I finally got me a capture card, and me and my clan's gonna be playing a lot of games. We're gonna be playing. Halo. Minecraft. I'm going to be playing Spelunky. Uh, awesome Knots. Gears. Wrath, Azor's Wrath. I'm doing a Let's Play of Azor's Wrath. Um, I'm looking over there at my games. Oh, Super Smash Brothers. Super Mario Party. Or Mario Party. Sorry, not Super Mario Party. You know, all that good stuff. I'm going to be doing a whole bunch of stuff like that now that I'm getting a capture card I'm a huge console gamer that's what I do and I'm, we're coming out with a new series well I am I gotta talk to my clan about it but they might do it with me it's called a uh, throwback and it's hopefully this uh, this show will get me machinima partnership throwbacks a, it's a show where me and my three good friends we get together, we put in an old game like Nintendo, Super Nintendo, Sega, uh, GameCube, N64, regular Xbox, and we just play it. Play it for like 30, 35 minutes until we get tired of it. It's called Throwback. Well, it's not the most catchy name. If you have a better name, please post it in the comments. So, I hope, like I said, hopefully it'll get me Machinima Partnership. Me and my friends, we're all really funny, we're all really, you know, everybody has our own personalities, and we all balance each other out, so, you know, stay tuned for that, if you want to see it, click the subscribe button, I hate really asking you guys, 
I don't want to seem like I'm begging, but it does help me out a lot. And that's it. I mean, that's all I got to talk to you about. I'm Drizzt to Erden. Thanks for watching the very first episode of Drizzt's Den. And I will see you guys next time.